proud of you. Excellent questions, because a lot of 17 year olds like you are not thinking about these questions. I'm proud of you. So what's your confusion? As a Protestant evangelical, you're taught to believe in the Trinity. So well, what's your confusion? You know, Father, it's not the same as Son. You, you know, the Son is not the same as Father. Exactly. All so, right. see, this confusion. Why? So let like, me, can I like, give you analogies? When I give you an analogy, remember, there's nothing in creation like God, right? When I give you an analogy, notice I'm not saying this is God. But I'm going to give you some just so you can mm -hmm. get an idea. Ready? Okay. Okay. Are you the oldest in your family? Yes, I am. Okay. Your mother, you came out of your mother. Do you have her nature? Yeah. So you're human, right? Yeah. Because your mother who birthed you is human. So you have the nature of your mother. So you're not your mother. Yes. You're a different person from your mother, right? Yes. But you have the same nature. Yeah. Jesus, the son, is not the father, but he has the same nature as his father. Because if you are the son of a man, the daughter of a woman, that makes you human. If you're the son of a donkey, then you're a jackass, right? Yeah. So I'm giving you an analogy. Now, God is not like you and me. He's not a physical being limited. But I'm just trying to help you understand where you can have two distinct entities that have the same nature. You are not your mother. Your mother is not you. But you both have the same nature because you came out of her. And what she is, you are, right? Yeah. So Jesus is not the father, but he's the father's son who's one with him. And he has the nature of his father. So if his father is God, what would his nature be? Yes, God. You get it. Yeah. Like if your mother is human, what is your nature? Human. Ah, that's my point. Okay. Now, secondly, think about this question. Pay attention to the question. You're the oldest and you're 17 years old, right? Yeah, that's now, right. Your mother is how old exactly? I just want to ask. Um, like 41. 41. Now, as a person, she's 41 years old, right? Yeah. But she hasn't always been been a mother, right? Uh -huh. So she only became a mother when she had you, right? Uh -huh. How long has she been a mother? What do you mean, like? If she has no children, she's not a mother. So how long has she been a mother? I mean, I don't know. Think about it. She only became a mother when she had you, right? Yes. So how old are you? I'm 17. So how long has she been a mommy? I don't know. Like... 17. She's only been a mother for 17 years because she couldn't be yes. a mother until she had a child, right? Yeah. And you're the first child, right? Yeah. Okay. You know what that means? If God the Father has been the father before there was creation. That means there was someone there with him that he was a father too, right? Yes. So that means for him to be an actual father, he has to have an actual son. But the Bible says the father has been the father from before creation. Yeah. That means there was someone before creation who made him a father who's just as old as him because you're only a father for as long as you've had a son. So if he's always been the father, he's always had a son. And that son is Jesus. Wow. I, I know that. Isn't that amazing? That. Yes, it is. I it hope is. that helped it you understand. So now you're getting some kind of understanding of the Trinity. But now what you need to do is yes. read the Bible and see why we believe the Trinity. Yeah, I, so, you know, like the God, like how God came into life. Like, God didn't come into like life. He the, has no beginning. Like, I mean, before the humans. Do God you know did I mean? not come into life. He has no beginning. How? That's why he's God and you're not. To ask how of a being that has no beginning makes no sense. You only talk about people who have a beginning, how they came into being. You had a beginning. God was there when there was no creation because he's without a beginning. Okay, but who created Okay, let's try this again. God, okay, like, here, let me let me smash my head against the wall. This is the public system. Hold on. Let me talk to Butch. Hold on. Can we talk to Butch? One second. Butch, okay, hold on. You ready? Can I talk to my friend yeah. Butch? This is my friend Butch. He's a very nice guy, right? And because you are young enough to be my granddaughter, he's going to be very nice, okay? So just okay. Butch, yeah. How could God be created if he has no beginning? Someone has no beginning, never had a start. That means he's not created. You agree? Okay. So why would you ask me, Butch, who created God? If he has no beginning, no one created him. 
Okay. So Butch got it. So I just want to know, did you get it? If God has no beginning, that means no one created him. So why would you try to figure out God when God by nature is beyond your mind and he has no beginning unlike you and because he has no beginning, that means he's always been there. And if he wasn't always there, you would not be here because he's the one who brought you into being. It's like trying to figure out things in even creation and science that you can't figure out. For example, a light. It's a particle and a wave. How can it be both? Can you explain that to me, Missy? Okay, so when it comes to God, he has no beginning. He's not created. Okay? So stop thinking of God having a beginning. He has no beginning. He's always been. So what's the other question? Uh, how can be God one being but in three persons? Why not? Why can't God, who's unlike you, be more than one person and still be one God? Like how? Like how's that? Because that's God. God is who he is. It's like asking me how does he have no beginning? God has no beginning and God is not like you. He doesn't exist like you. So why can't God be more than one person? Yeah, that makes sense. It's like saying one times one times one is one. No, can't be. One divided by one divided by one is one. No, it can't be. One to the third power is one. How? How can one times one times one be one? Mm -hmm. One plus one plus one is one? Three. You know, you're really playing with my mind. I don't appreciate it. You're telling me one divided by one divided by one is one. One times one times one is one. But one plus one plus one is three. How can one plus one plus one be three? But then one divided by one divided by one is one. And one times one times one is one. You get the point? Yeah. There are things that just are. They just happen to be. They just exist. That's just how they are. So God just is mm -hmm. without beginning. God just is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's just who he is. He can't be uh, anything else. He can't be otherwise. You get it now? Mm -hmm. Right? Do you yeah. have any other questions? So this is the biggest question. So if the Jesus is God, why is he praying to the Father? Are you human? Like You're human, right? Well. Are you human? Yeah. Why do you speak to your mother? Because mm -hmm. she's my mother. Okay, so what? But you're human, so you shouldn't be speaking to her. Okay, you understand? What do you mean? Is Jesus the father? No. So why would you be confused that Jesus communicates with the father? Jesus can be God and communicate with the father because he's not the father. You can be human and communicate with your mother because you're not your mother. Where's the problem? Yeah. So then what's the problem with Jesus praying to the Father when prayer is communication? Just like you can be human and speak to your mother, even though you're human, she's human, but you're not the same person. Jesus can be God who prays to the Father because prayer is communication and Jesus is not the Father. So the Father communicates with the Son. The Son communicates with the Spirit because they all communicate with one another prayer is communication since jesus uh -huh. is not the father he's the son as a good son he's always communicating with the father speaking with the father and that's what prayer is don't let them deceive you okay okay so you can have father son Holy spirit praying to one another because father son Holy spirit talk to one another have fellowship with one another and are in love with one another. So the son speaks to the father. The father speaks to the son. Do you want me to show you where the son prays to the father and the father prays to the son where the father responds? Okay, here, John 12, 28 to 30. Pay attention. John 12, 28 to 30. Father, glorify your son. Immediately, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. So who was speaking to Jesus? The father. So that means the father prayed to the son as the son prayed to him. Father, glorify your name. Son, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. John 12, 28 to 30. That sounds like the father prayed to the son as well, right? Yeah. That's all prayer is communication. 